Hello everyone. Uh, in the previous video we spoke about exponential smoothing for forecasting. Uh, in this video we will be working on trends, uh, especially the linear trend. Uh, let me just work it from the very scratch in a new sheet. Excel sheet. Okay, uh, in order to use this we must have more than four or five datas, data points, because otherwise uh, we won't be able to make sense out of it. Let's assume that we are selling cell phones and um, the weekly sales data, we have it for the past 10 weeks. So the first thing you need to do, you can even look at it and you can see that it looks like there's an upward trend. We started our sales with 700 cell phones the first week and then it became 724, 720. Uh, the, best, uh, the best way would be if to select it and then go to insert and then click on recommend it and then you could choose any of the two okay you could either choose scatter or you could choose a simple line whichever you like uh, and then click on okay with this one you could immediately see that there is an upward trend in our data uh, the shortcut for this would be in excel to just right click on this and then click on add trend line and then okay let's just bring it here uh, from here you could choose linear and then display equation on chart as soon as you click on it you can immediately see the equation on the chart and you could even make it big there you go it's very simple here however the drawback of this is that I cannot use this equation in a cell so I can't really convert it here in order to predict because for this, this X is our T. So, for example, if I want to find, uh, if I want to forecast for the 11th period or the 11th week, the sales, what is it going to be? All I need to do is, uh, this is the slope. So I would write this and then instead of X, I would write 11 and then plus 699.4. However, uh, we would be using the equation so that because there could be some more decimals here which it doesn't show. So if you want to be 100% accurate in that sense, then I'll have to uh, do some more math here. Okay, number crunching. All right, I could just put it aside. Uh, in order to do that, or I could even leave right now, I could simply use this and then just uh, use the Excel like equals 7.5091 and then multiplied by 11 and then add 699.4 there you go that will be the forecast for for our 11 period that's as easy as it gets uh, however we want to be 100 percent accurate and I will also show you if you're using a paper and pen how to do it. So for that, uh, I would also need to be using this equation. It may look a bit difficult, but it's very easy. All right, let me just copy it and then paste it here so that we have it and then I'll use it. What do I need to do is I have my T and I have my Y. I need to also multiply the two. I could just copy this over again or I could just simply leave it there. Um, let me just redo it, this one. I could simply copy it here and that here I will just name it as T, this one as Y, and then I'll multiply the two, T times Y, and then I'll also need to square the two, T times T or um, T squared, all right in order to derive this equation that is here. Uh, this is why I'm doing this. So the first thing I need to do is I need to multiply T with Y, so equals T times Y, press enter, and then double click on this. You don't even need to scroll it down, I will do it. And then I need to square the T, so I'll say equals T and uh, shift number six and then two. So if we square one, it is one. So double click. Uh, there you go. Now I need the sum of these because the equation does tell us that we need 
n is the number of uh, periods that we have. In this case, we have 10. And then sum of t times y. So we would be needing the sum of this. All right. So I, I would be needing the sum of all of them. So you write sum equals sum and then just select it, press enter. And then I could also drag it across. I could make it bold to see. There you go. That's the sum of my t. That's sum of my y. That's the sum of t times y. And that's the sum of t squared. There you go. I have all my necessary information uh, in order to derive this equation. This equation uh, y hat equals um, a plus bt as it's in the book. Or if you have also remember uh, this equation y equals mx plus b is exactly the same thing. You, you could write it in multiple ways. In some textbooks in your maths you have also studied ax plus b all right where a is the slope of the line um, x is our variable and b is where uh, our fixed value would be all right so these are all the same thing you could write it in multiple ways so for this in the book uh, this equation is used in that form uh, you could use any of the form they're all the same thing let's find b first so for b what do i need to do in order to find b my b equals so is n i could either directly write 10 or it would be also wiser for example if you want to add an extra data in between i would suggest using the count function so you could just write anywhere you want you could just simply write n small n equals and then write count so you want to count it. So the beauty of count is that if I increase anything in between and if I add an extra point, that would also change. Okay, let me show you. For example, if I have more data, and if I had like forgotten or made a mistake, uh, 774, there, uh, and okay. So this also have to be whatever that is in there equals this and then drag it down you see n has changed now it became 11 so I could undo it there you go uh, I would prefer using the count function or I could simply write 10 whichever you like okay so equals um, I'll start my brackets because I would pu put all the equation in the numerator between the bracket and then I'll use the division sign and then use it all okay the, uh, the uh, numerator and the denominator after that so equals n my n is 10 in that case and then times the sum of t times y sum of t times y is this value okay what next minus uh, the sum of t times sum of y. What is my sum of t? Is this, and then times sum of y. Here you go. Divided by again n. Okay, I will click on that. Times sum of t squared. Okay, there you go. Sum of t squared minus. I would put it between bracket. Sum of t, where is my sum of t? Okay, there you go, sum of t, all squared. There you go, enter. Uh, that is my b. Now, uh, we couldn't have found a first because you see b is an equation within a. So we have to find b first and then after that we can find a. Now let's figure out a a equals sum of y where is my sum of y this is my sum of y minus b times sum of t okay divided by n there you go 
that is my a now I need to put it into this equation so my y hat the reason it says hat is because it's for forecasting my y hat equals a all right plus b okay and then you multiply it by t in this case whichever time you want so for example I want to uh, use any t I, I could write for example t anywhere I want I write t equals and I'll just make it yellow so whichever t I choose whatever I write in there just give me the forecast so here I'll write y equals a plus b times whatever the t I insert there enter so if I don't put anything it's zero so if b is zero obviously it would become 699.4 so let me forecast for the 11th period so if I write 11 and I could also increase or decrease the decimal points you see it's for the 11th it's okay 72.000 however when I simply use that it was just 72.001 so there is a little bit difference you see tiny little bit difference if I use the shortcut or I could use this method as well so any period I want uh, it wouldn't be wise to use like the forecast for the 20 period because we don't know what's gonna happen all right so you could use it for two three four max I would say because uh, there are a lot of other methods that I will show so for linear trends uh, that is pretty much it